this is your first saxophone lesson. This is for the beginner beginner who is just taking their saxophone out of the case. I'm going to give you a step by step. First things first, I get out my reed and I put it in my mouth and I'll leave it in there while I'm setting it up. For a beginner, I would say a two and a half to strength, two and a half to three reed is going to be fine for you. Um, that would be a good beginning strength. Anyway, since I can't talk with this in my mouth, I'm going to put it over here for now. But in the meanwhile, when you're setting up, do this. Next thing, we have the next strap. Drop it around your neck and you'll notice this mechanism here, most of them have something like this where you pull on the thing to make it tighter or longer. Some kids start on the Protec bouncy straps. They're okay, they're really light on your neck, but I find it a little bit harder to play. So you want to get a neck strap that's pretty solid in the back. Okay. Next thing. The neck. And then here... We also have the mouthpiece and the mouthpiece cap and what we call the ligature, which is this thing. They all look a little bit different, but most of them will have some kind of a design with a screw, one or two. Okay. Um, if your saxophone is new, you'll want to take court grease, which looks kind of like a chapstick. And I just put it on my finger and then put it around the, the neck and then put the mouthpiece on there, like so. Now comes the trickiest part about putting it together. You have your thread, which you've been doing this. And I take it and I line it up with the mouthpiece. I'm going to bring this closer in just a minute so you can look at it. Let's see if this will help. So I kind of line it up with the top of the mouthpiece here. And because it's wet, it stays in place, which is helpful. You take the ligature carefully around the top and then notice I put it just below where that light part meets, where it's, we call it the heart, meets the other part. And also in the back you'll see that it goes just below that. And then I just tighten it up just enough so it doesn't move around. So you'll see it looks like this. Okay. There, I have heard of some ligatures that tighten across the back. Most of the ones I know go across the front, but there are a few that do tighten kind of on the back side. Okay, hard part's over. Most of you, if your saxophone is new, will have this, which we call an end plug. Of course, you take that out. And just drop that neck in. Now be very careful, depending on your saxophone, this is a bar to brace the neck for some support, but it can bend. I have done it myself. So just be, be careful with the neck. Hold it around the edge and don't pull up and down on it because they can be fragile. Then you tighten your screws here. And now we have a complete saxophone. I want to point out one thing. However far you put it in on the neck will affect the tuning, which means when you play with other people, it'll either sound good or bad. <laughs> That'll be one of the factors. Let me just show you the differences between far out. And when I push it in really far, see how the difference changes? Um, when I'm playing, I will often I'll put a line on the cork after I've figured out my tuning. You'll probably need a lesson for that to figure out how tuning works. But um, I put a line on the cork with my pen, and then I always know to push it in around that area. Now, saxophones put together, I haven't helped you make any sound out of it. Let me get the hands, show you how that works, and then we're going to get to this part. Okay, you take your right hand, your thumb, Put it under the hook here. I like to tell my students that the keys, at least on a lot of saxophones, they're the keys that you keep your fingers on the majority of the time have dents in them. So in that case on the right hand side, it's one, two, three. Okay? Now on the left, put your thumb on the black thing. 
And then you reach it around, this is your left hand here, and then you put it on, in my case it's three keys with the dip. Notice there's a teardrop one up here that I skip, and then I skip a little one in here called the bis key, and then I put it on the bottom two. So those are the main keys you play, or you keep your fingers on in the beginning. Now, now comes the fun part. When I put the mouthpiece in my mouth, I put my teeth on the top, and I curl my bottom lip in, like so. You don't want to go too far, or too little. Too little is really common, because people are afraid of it. It has to be free to vibrate. So you want it about halfway, with your teeth on the top, and your bottom lip tucked in over your teeth. Let me get a little bit closer so you can see this up close. It's kind of a complex thing, getting a good sound. The most important thing is to listen to yourself as you play. But one thing that will help you is you're not only putting pressure on the top and the bottom, because you will squeak if you push too hard on the bottom. But if you also use all of your muscles, even the ones on the side of your mouth, to hold on to it, not just the top and the bottom, but the side, and inside my mouth what's going on is it's like a tunnel of air. And so the muscles inside are also helping to support the sound. Oh, one more thing I didn't mention. When I tuck my lip in, where the pink meets the flesh part, that's the part that touches the reed. Okay, that you'll have to work on a little bit on your own, just to find a good sound. Okay, I'm just going to give you three fingerings to start with, to work on getting a sound. Um, put your thumb here, first finger on that top one that's between those two keys, that's a B. Okay, let's add another one. Two keys down. That's an A. And then that third key, G. I hope that helps. Good luck.